one. Pray that you all are doing well, and it's so good to see you this evening. Pray you got your nap in this afternoon, and uh, it's good to see you at the house of the Lord. Well, thank everybody coming for choir practice uh, tonight. Still got room in the choir for anybody that wants to join. Uh, wasn't it a blessing to be in God's house this morning and uh, be together, see all these children, and uh, God met with us, and we surely appreciate that, and I uh, look forward to him meeting with us this evening. Um, on Friday, the 24th, uh, men, we're going to be going down to Pilgrim's Pathway House of Refuge in Spindale. Um, I've got the honor and the privilege to preach down there on Friday night at 7 o'clock. So we'll leave here at 625, and uh, we'll go worship the Lord together. And then we'll find a cookout uh, on the way home, grab us a milkshake, and uh, we'll have a wonderful time in the Lord. On Saturday the 25th, a baby shower for Jason and Hannah Harris down in the Fellowship Hall. Um, that's going to be at 2 o'clock. Um, they are getting ready to welcome the first child into their home. It's going to be a little boy. Um, so you come by and love on them and encourage them as they get ready for this great moment in their lives. And on Sunday, March the 5th, got a busy day. Um, during the morning service, we're going to have VBS Preview Sunday. Our theme this year is Twists and Turns, and we praise the Lord for the opportunity to do Vacation Bible School. And everybody can serve Vacation Bible School, and we'll talk a little bit about different areas that you may like to serve in. Uh, that evening on March the 5th, we won't have any services here um, on the campus here at Big Level. We're going to move our services down to Oak Grove Baptist Church in Landrum, South Carolina. Brother Lynn Stewart has invited me to come and preach uh, their first meeting of their spring revival that night. So um, pray that you make plans to go and be with us. The bus is uh, going to leave at 5 o'clock for anybody that wants to meet here and ride the bus. And uh, for any of those that just want to drive down there in your own vehicle, uh, service is going to start at 6 o'clock. So you go ahead and make plans to be with us. On Saturday, March the 11th, there's going to be a benefit for Brother Warren Elliott over at Cooper's Gap from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, going to just to be a blessing to his family and to help him as he's been battling some health issues. And we love Brother Warren and his family, so we want to be a blessing to him. And part of that, what we're going to do on our end is on Sunday, the 26th of February, and then on Sunday, March the 5th, we're going to take up love offering you can give um, to the to that cause for Brother Warren, and every penny that you give will go to him, and we'll take it over there on the 11th as we go enjoy some barbecue as well. Then on Sunday, uh, March the 12th, I, I hate I skipped over this this morning, it was not on purpose, uh, but uh, Daylight Savings Time and also March Madness Sunday. Uh, wear your favorite college team, and we'll have a wonderful time together. Go ahead and get prayed up so you don't get in, get in a fight with anybody as you come in and, and uh, got conflicting teams there. Uh, we, can, we can all get Get together in the Lord and have a good time, amen, and uh, not, not have to shed any blood at the church house, um, but we're going to have a good time uh, with that. Easter's coming soon, so if you would like to sing uh, and be a part of our Good Friday service, please see myself or Brother Bruce, and uh, we will get you in the order of services. Um, we'll focus on the cross that night, so um, all our specials and our hymns uh, will uh, key in on the blood and the cross, and then... With also Easter coming, got a bin back there in the back for Easter candy. Um, you can drop off bags of candy back there so we can fill those Easter eggs for the Easter egg hunt for the kids. Drop that off by March 18th, and I know that you'll be blessed for it. Our, our ministries of the month are Crossroads Rescue Mission in Shelby, North Carolina, and Pilgrim's Pathway House of Refuge in Spindale, um, both uh, wonderful Christ-centered, gospel-centered organizations um, that help people that are um, battling addiction and different things. Uh, Pilgrim's Pathway, um, they take men straight out of Rutherford County Jail and uh, take them over there to their facility. And uh, Crossroads and Shelby, they, like I said, they specialize um, in working with those that have different hang-ups and different substance abuse issues and addictions. Um, I will tell you, I went down there and preached one time, and there was a gentleman that had just got there that day from Los Angeles, California. I don't know how he found Shelby, North Carolina from Los Angeles, California, but he did. And so the, these places are reaching people from all across the United States. And uh, couldn't think of two better ministries to support as our Ministries of the Month. So every penny that you give for the Ministries of the Month will be split between uh, those two ministries. And then if you'd like to give to Operation Christmas Child for the month of February, um, they ask that you donate toys and stuffed animals. We appreciate everybody giving to that. And if you'd like to give 
give to the renovation project that's happening here at the church. Um, you can just mark that on the tithing envelope or on the check, and uh, every penny that you give will just come off the final bill on that. And we praise the Lord for everything that's been done already and everything that's going to be done. And uh, things are happening as we speak, so we praise the Lord for that. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, asking to bless our time together tonight. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for being so good to us. Father, we thank you for meeting with us this morning. Uh, thank you uh, for a church uh, full of folks, a uh, church full of children, uh, just a wonderful spirit in this place. And uh, God, we just want to thank you for meeting with your people. Thank you for everyone that's made their way out tonight. We pray for the ones that could not be here. We know we got many that are battling sickness and different things. So, Lord, we lift them up to you tonight. Would you meet with your people tonight? Would you change hearts and change lives as only you can? And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's said and done. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. In your church hymnal page, 165, 165, kneel at the cross. Let's all stand and give God the glory. Amen. Praise his name. Turn over to 169, 169, let my life be a life for the Lord, amen? Give him praise.
God's children said.
to shake hands all over this building. Like The tomb's empty today. Hallelujah. If it was still occupied, we might as well lock up, shut the lights off, and go to the house. But it's empty. He is not here. He is risen. And uh, what a blessed hope that we have. Thankful for a risen Lord and Savior tonight. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we're going to be in verse 10 tonight, uh, continuing through the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10 found your place and you will and enable would you stand tonight for reverence to the reading of the word of God the Bible says this in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10 uh, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven uh, let's pray heavenly father we thank you for this day Thank you for another opportunity to come to your house and to worship you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. And uh, Father, we, we thank you uh, for everyone that's made their way out. Thank you, uh, Lord, for meeting with us. Thank you for the songs that have been sung. Thank you for the prayers that have been prayed. Father, we say thank you for your pure, holy, infallible word. Fathers, we look to this text tonight. I pray that you'd cleanse and empty me of self and sin pray that you'd hide me behind the cross and use me as a vessel to be preached through. I stand where my flesh fails me. I cannot preach in and of myself. So, God, I pray that you preach tonight. And may we leave this place tonight saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Lead, God, and direct. We'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's said and done. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated tonight. We know in context, if we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount together over the past few weeks, uh, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ has now begun His earthly ministry. And if you look back in chapter 4, we find that the fame of the Lord Jesus Christ is now going forth. He has been healing all manner of sickness and disease. And the greatest preacher and teacher of all time is about to speak and preach and teach unto a multitude of people. Up to this time, we don't have much that has been documented down in the Word of God uh, when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. But He is about to speak, and as He gets started, we're in a passage of Scripture that has been deemed the Beatitudes. He said in verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. 
And blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As we are in verse 10 tonight, uh, he says, Blessed are they which are persecuted. I want to remind you tonight that as Jesus is in this text and as he is preaching and teaching to this multitude that he is 100% God and he is 100% man. He did not lay aside deity to come down here and robe himself in flesh. I believe as he was 100% man and he felt the things that we feel in our life. He got hungry. He got tired. He wept. He got thirsty. He had all those different things. He was tempted in all ways as we are, but he was yet without sin because he was 100% God. I believe that he could look down and he could see down the road. He had a foreknowledge and he knew what was coming. Jesus knew what was to come. And I want to tell you this tonight, friend. When you look at the New Testament, you will find that there is a term that is synonymous with people who are close to Jesus and that term is suffering. People will suffer the closer that they get to Jesus. Uh, he's talking about persecution. And friend, I, I want to remind you tonight that those which are persecuted, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, you will find synonymous with them that they keep the prior beatitudes that we've went over. They'll be poor in spirit. They'll mourn over their sin. They will sow meekness. They will hunger and thirst after righteousness. They will be merciful. They'll be pure in heart. They'll be peacemakers. <laughs> they will have those things applied to their life. <laughs> uh, I, I like what one commentator had to say. He said, if you're going to be persecuted, you must live it every single day when it comes to this Christian life. If you don't want to be persecuted, just avoid looking like Jesus. Just avoid living for Jesus. If you don't ever want persecution to come to your life, just don't look anything like Jesus and that persecuting crowd will leave you alone. But he said, blessed are they which are persecuted. Why, I came to remind you tonight, friend, that it's a promise that we will be persecuted. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, I want to read it to you tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It is a promise. Jesus can look down the road. He knows that this is coming for those that follow after him. Now, I want to say this tonight, friend. Not everybody, not everybody that you come in contact with is always going to be happy that you're living for Jesus. Why, the Pharisees in this multitude, they were not going to be happy that people would follow after what Jesus was teaching and looking more like Jesus. They'd rather try to say, well, you got to look more like the law and do this and do that. Jesus didn't come to condemn the law, but he did come and fulfill it. <laughs> so therefore, we're not under the law. We're under grace in the New Testament. Why those zealots? They're sitting there saying, I, I want a revolution. <laughs> I want to maybe inflict some persecution on somebody, on that Roman government. <laughs> but I don't know about this whole being persecuted. Sadducees, see, they avoided persecution. Because when you take scripture out of context and you only apply a little bit to your life, you'll avoid persecution. Because you've got to take the whole thing. You've got to apply it all to your life. You've you got to sit there and say, whatever Jesus said, I, I want to live it. I, I want to say it. I want to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake now I, I want to say tonight friend here in the United States of America we don't have a clue what persecution is we don't have a clue what persecution is 
We are not gathering together tonight and meeting in private down in the fellowship hall with the doors locked and the lights off and worried about somebody coming through here with assault rifles and telling us we can't do what we're doing. We're not going to drive up the road tonight and put our Bibles underneath the seat in fear that a police officer is going to pull us over and throw us in jail because we have a copy of God's Word in our vehicle. We don't have a clue in the United States of America. By the way, I'm proud to be an American. I, I'm thankful to be where I am doing what I'm doing. But friend, we don't have a clue when it comes to to being persecuted. And many people who label themselves as being persecuted, uh, they've got the wrong idea. I can remember years ago, uh, one of my mentors, he told me, he said, son, he said, if you get any opportunity to preach anywhere, he said, you go. He said, you preach. And so being a young preacher, I said, you know what? I, I'm, I saw jail ministry come up. And you go in there and there's, to jail ministry, and if anybody ever been to jail ministry before, anybody ever done anything like that? Well, a couple of you, yeah. You walk in there toting a Bible, and they think you're an attorney. <laughs> Some of you got that. <laughs> they sit there, and they'll come up to the bars, and they'll tell you all these things about, oh, I, I'm being done wrong. They, they set me up, that's what they did. You know, I didn't do this, and I, I didn't do that, and I, I'm telling you, I'm innocent, and all this. I said, listen, I didn't come here to plead your case. I come to tell you about Jesus. That's what I'm here to do. I, I'm not an attorney, but I am a preacher. If you'll sit down and listen for just a minute, I want to tell you about the greatest news you can ever hear. Yeah. Sitting there saying, oh, well, I got set up, and they come up with this plan against me. Can I tell you that that mentality is not just in the jail house, but it's crept its way into the church house. People sit there and they say, Oh, well, I'm being persecuted in the church because they don't like my idea and they never do anything that I mention. And they don't do this or they don't do that. And I, I said we ought to do this. And why they didn't do it this year and they haven't done it for three years in a row. I'm being persecuted. No, you're not. You're just being a baby crying in the corner because you didn't get your way. You're not being persecuted. You can say amen. It's okay. It's not going to hurt you. I promise you're not going to get laryngitis. It'll be all right. We don't have a clue, okay, about being persecuted. <laughs> we know about not getting our way and Baptists can throw a pity party with the best of them. But we, we don't have any clue about being persecuted for righteousness sake. See, that's the thing. A lot of people, they say, well, I'm being persecuted. I'm being persecuted. I'm having to go through these storms. I'm having to go through these circumstances. You know, the problem is most of the time it's a sin problem. They're not living their life like Christ said to live it, and so they're having to go through the consequences of their actions, and they say, well, I'm, I'm being persecuted. <laughs> no, you're not. You're reaping what you sowed. <laughs> he said not being persecuted for the wrong decisions that you make. You're being persecuted for righteousness' sake. Being persecuted because you look like, talk like, and act like Jesus, and the world rejected him persecuted him and they're going to do the very very same thing to us they're not going to like it I read one commentator he said imagine going and getting a new job and going down on the job site and everybody around you is lost professes to be lost uses that nasty language all day long and you come home to your spouse and you say and she and she or she looks at you and says well did anybody find out you were a Christian today? No, nope, no. Nope. As far as I know, nobody knows. Everything's good. Friend, to a lost and dying world, we ought to be portraying Jesus. They ought to be able to see a difference in every single one of us. Friend, I'm here to tell you, if you can go out there in that worldly crowd and you can rub elbows with that worldly crowd, if you can fit right in and you don't stand out because you're living for Jesus, I tell you this tonight with all the love in my heart, you don't have to worry about being persecuted. You don't have to worry about it. Because here's the thing. We'd find out real quick in the United States of America, real quick, who the real church was if some persecution did come our way. 
I'm just going to preach for a minute. Hey, some people, they won't come to church when it's 70 outside and sun shining and nobody, nobody's telling them they can't come. The birds are singing. Why, it's wonderful. The church bell's ringing and everybody, just come on in. It's going to be a wonderful time. They won't come then. You really think they're going to come when somebody says, don't come? No. They're going to stay at the house. I, I, I debated whether to get in and on center or not, but I'm just going to roll with it. Y'all forgive me. That pandemic taught us a lot, didn't it? Because they some people that was coming to church you hadn't seen in three years. Where'd they go? Friend, I'm here to tell you, when it comes to the church being persecuted, when it comes to believers being persecuted, a crowd that won't even come to church three night, three times a week, <laughs> they sit there and say, I, that ain't worth it to me. Don't worry about being persecuted. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Because it's not going to come your way. Because they'll sit there and say, I'll, I'll do whatever, whatever this government agency says. I, I'll do whatever this person in leadership says. If you say I can't go to church, okay, I'm not going to go to church. If you say I'm not supposed to read my Bible, then I'm not going to read my Bible. If you say I'm not supposed to pray, I'm not going to pray. If you say I'm not supposed to go to worship service, we're not going to have worship service. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-mm. One time somebody asked me, they said, preacher, they said, what are you going to do if they start locking up preachers for preaching the gospel? I said, I guess we'll have jailhouse religion. We have revival in the jailhouse. Y'all take up love offering and bail me out. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, I, I, God, God has called me to do this, and he's done something for me that nobody else could ever do for me. He's done something for me that I could not do for myself. The least that I could do for him after all that he went through for me is to live for him no matter the circumstances. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Do you know that we take up funds every year to give to missionaries that are going into places where they can't even use their real name to tell people about Jesus? We support that. We aid in that. We aid in the gospel going forth into places around the world. Where if you are found with a Bible or having church, they're going to lock you up in jail or they may just kill you on the spot. Amen. Friend, I'm here to tell you this is the real deal. It's the real deal. And we better prepare our hearts just in case it comes to this place. What are you going to do one day if they say, no more church, no more gathering together, no more worship services, no more Bible reading, no more worship singing. What are you going to say? <laughs> I can tell you it's amazing if you look at the early church. The early church, the Bible says that it was added to daily. But under Roman government, if you know anything about Nero, Nero loved to persecute the Christians. Nero was not a nice fella. Nero loved to put the Christians in the Colosseum. It is even said in history that Nero would tie Christians up in his garden and set them on fire and burn them alive to light his garden at night as he would walk through it. That, that is what is on the way right here in biblical time. But if you go to Acts, you'll find that the church was added to daily. Why? Because people sit there and watch people give their life for the cause of Christ and they say, that's got to be real. That's got to be real. For somebody to go and to be stoned for the cause of Christ and they sit there and say, recant Jesus and you can live. And they say, no, no, he's my Lord, he's my Savior. And they stone him to death or they throw him to a den of lions or they burn him alive and do these different things to him. But the church was added to daily because people said there has to be something real about this. You know what the world needs to see? They need to see some real, true Christians in 2023. That's what they need to see. That's where you're going to see people added to the church. That's where you're going to see the gospel going forth. 
Not when we hide away in a corner somewhere, but as the hymn writer said, when we stand up, stand up for Jesus. <laughs> Live for him. Look like him. Talk like him. <laughs> he said, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. <laughs> for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's very interesting to me that something as vile and as damaging as persecution that could come to someone's life, God didn't promise to remove it. He didn't promise to remove it from the believer's life. He did say, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> But persecution comes, he doesn't remove it. But I can go all the way back to the Old Testament and I can, I can see this. He didn't remove the persecution, but he did show up and go with his people through the persecution. You see, he's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He's going to be with us every step of the way. And I think about those three Hebrew boys. When old King Nebuchadnezzar said, when you hear all those sounds of music, I want you to bow down and worship. Them three Hebrew boys said, no, I'm not going to do it. So they're brought before the king. I'm going to give you another opportunity. No, O king, we're not going to bow down. We're not going to worship. No. Did God remove the fiery furnace? Did God take them out of Nebuchadnezzar's palace there and take them away and transport them to another place? No, no. They had to go through some things. They bound them up with their coats and everything and threw them in there. The Bible says it was so hot that the guys that threw them in died. Then old Nebuchadnezzar, he got a math lesson. When he looked over, he said, did we not throw three in? He said, for I see four. And the fourth is like the Son of God down there in the midst of the fire. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. He'll walk with you. He'll be right there with you every step of the way. I heard one preacher preach it like this. He said, you know what? I can't figure out. Why them boys get down there in that fiery furnace and why they're alive and they're not even being harmed by this fiery furnace. They didn't run out. They just still walked about. Because when he's with you, you can walk about in your own fiery furnace. Everything's going to be all right. Doesn't matter what comes your way. As long as we got him, we got everything. Is there anything in this life that heaven can't heal? Is there any turmoil, strife, storm, persecution in this life that heaven can't heal? We felt him on this side. Glory, hallelujah, praise his name. We're going to see him face to face on the other side. <laughs> I was watching a testimony of a lady. She just wept and cried. She said, the greatest thing I could ever do in my life is to lay down my life as a martyr for the Lord Jesus Christ. Just the greatest thing I could ever do is give my life for the Lord Jesus Christ after all that he has done for me. <laughs> Friends, I'm here to tell you tonight, I, I just come to encourage you. Let's look like Jesus tomorrow. Let's talk like Jesus tomorrow. Let's live, let's live a life that if persecution came to the United States of America, they'd have to pinpoint the people of Big Level Baptist Church and say, them some godly people out there. <laughs> hey, <laughs> they're poor in spirit. <laughs> they mourn. They're meek. They hunger and thirst after righteousness. By the way, righteousness is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. They hunger and thirst after the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> they're merciful. They're full of compassion. They love on people. They're pure in heart. <laughs> why purity has been applied to their life. They're peacemakers. They don't cause conflict while they just love on one another and they strive to be in unity. And hey, verse 10 may very well come 
our way. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Remember, Christian, life is not promised to be easy. It's not promised to be easy. The day that you got saved, the preacher looked down and he said, Well, congratulations, you just got saved. You're never going to have another headache. You're never, never going to have another bellyache. You're never going to have another emotional trouble. You're never going to have anything happen to you in this life that's going to cause you any pain anymore. It didn't take you very long to figure out that person lied to you, did it? Yeah. Friend, the Christian, the Christian life is not, is not an easy life, but there is a promise. There is a promise. And my, what a promise it is. That those of us that are blood-bought and redeemed in this place, we never have to go through anything alone. We never have to go through anything alone. He's always with us. What a comfort. What a hope. And what a blessing. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom. Let's live and look like Jesus this week and live a life that if persecution came our way, that persecution would come. And it would only cause us to love him even more, (laughs) serve him even more, because he's worth it all. Amen? He's worthy. He's worthy of it all. Um, All that he went through for you and I, the least we can do is live unashamedly for him. (laughs) Amen? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for this passage of scripture. Um, Father, we, we know um, that where we are here in this great country, that we, we do not suffer uh, persecution. But God, we, we know that as a church, we support missionaries um, that do suffer persecution. They're going into places where they could lose their life for the cause of Christ. And I, I want to thank you for calling people to do that. I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to aid in sending people to these places because your gospel is for everyone. It's a whosoever gospel. And so I want to thank you for the opportunities that we have to, to go, even by our funding, to go and to help share the gospel in these places. And, and God, we pray. We pray for our church. We pray for those that make it up. God, help us to live a life um, that we are firm in our relationship with you. Help us not to waver. And, and God, if persecution does come, God, we, we pray that we would stand steadfast in your love and your mercy and your grace. And God, we, we pray um, that many, many would be able to see our testimonies if a time like this were to come so that, that the church would be, the big C church would be added to for your glory and for your glory alone. We, we thank you for everyone that made their way out tonight. We pray you keep them safe as they travel home. And if you give Wednesday to us, we look forward to coming back to your house and to worshiping you because you alone are worthy to be worshiped. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. Well, I pray that you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Tell somebody you love them before you go tonight. God bless you all.